Well, good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. If you're here with us here in the room, let's all stand to our feet. Those of you, us, those of you who are joining us from home, maybe you're on spring break this week. We're so glad you're joining us. If you're sitting this time aside early in the morning to seek the Lord, to seek the Lord together and to pray, to worship and to minister to the heart of the Father. It's the highest call that we have is to minister to him. And long before we ever receive or ask the Lord anything, it's so important that we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Praise opens up the gates, opens up and gives us access. Thanksgiving gives us access to the heart of the Father. That's why Paul even writes in Philippians, he said that without anxiety, with prayer and supplication, make your requests known unto God with thanksgiving. And then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and soul. And so thanksgiving is key as we enter in and we minister to him. And so I want to encourage you to have your Bibles, your journals, your pens, your coffee, whatever it is that's going to help you stay focused and engaged with him today. It's so important. I want to begin with uh, Psalm 63. It's one of my favorite psalms because I believe that it's the overflow of David's heart. In every season of his life, he begins by saying, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. Or some translation says, early I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and a weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you and so I will bless you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night for you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you, and your right hand upholds me. So, Father, today we confess this morning, Lord, that we thirst for you. That you indeed are the living water, the only thing that can quench the thirst of our soul. Lord, we live in a dry and a weary land. The things of this world have no satisfaction in them. In fact, they dry us out. They leave us thirsty for more. But Lord, we turn to you. We say that all of our springs are in you. Jesus, you alone satisfy. You alone quench the thirst of our soul. And so it is with joy, Lord, that our lips will praise you, bless you, minister to you because your steadfast love is better than life, God. Lord, that you're the richest affair. You're the bread of life. So we come to your table this morning to bless your heart, but to receive that which satisfies and strengthens our soul today. We bless you, Jesus. Father, we love you. Spirit, we welcome you. Oh, how we love you because you have loved us. So it's our joy to bring our songs and our prayers and our praise and to put it before you with no striving because you're so good to us. You're so kind to us. Meet us in this place this morning.
Begin to tell him thank you this morning. Let it rise up from your hearts. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your hearts. Begin to praise him for what he's done in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy that follows me every day. I taste it. I've
all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me for all my days. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Sing all my life All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God yeah. Sing, I love your voice I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have been in the goodness of God.
steadfast love and your mercies that meet us every morning every day God your goodness Lord you are good and you do good all of your works all of the works of your hand Lord reveal who you are reveal the strength and the grace that you're slow to anger steadfast in mercy. Lord, you're good to us. Father, this morning we want to cultivate that. Like a farmer puts the plow into the soil to turn it up, to turn it over. After seasons of drought and winter where the surface of the soils become packed down, Lord, today we want to put the blade of thanksgiving into our hearts. With the fruit of our lips, the praise and the thanksgiving that comes out of us today. To turn over the soil where we've become indifferent, calloused, tired, familiar with your goodness, God. And we want to remind our hearts once again. Remind our souls once again of your goodness to us, God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Remember all of his benefits. Lord, today we remember. Call it to remember it's your faithfulness in every season of our lives. Your goodness in every season of our life. We remind our hearts. We even command our souls today, remember the faithfulness and the goodness of your God. Remember the ways that he's he's made when there was no way. Remember his miracles. Remember his still small voice, his presence, his nearness when you felt alone and he drew near. Remember the times where he's encouraged and he's strengthened, where he's provided, where he's part of the Red Sea. God, 
we remember today and we say, great is your faithfulness, your everlasting love towards us, God. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Thou changest not, thou. God, you are the same. Your compassion fails not. You're merciful, compassionate to us. Thank you for your goodness. mercy is over all that he has made. Let's just take a moment. Let's not be in a hurry to move beyond that. Let's just cultivate and stir up thankfulness to the Lord today. Gratitude out of the depths of our heart for his mercy and his grace, his gratefulness. Wherever you're at, at home or in this room, I want you to just take the next minute, minute and a half, two minutes here. And I want you to verbalize. Let your words activate thankfulness out of your own heart today. To verbalize and to speak it out. Just words of gratitude, thankfulness. To remind, maybe to remind the Lord of times where he's been faithful, where he's been good. Maybe it's even just declaring, Lord, I believe that you're good. I believe that you're for me. Lord, that your grace meets me today. Begin to Proclaim and declare his goodness, his faithfulness over your life this morning.
over our households, and even over our neighborhoods and city today. Psalm 144 and verse 12 says, May our sons and their youth be like plants full grown, and our daughters like corner pillars cut, from, cut for the structures of a palace. May our granaries be full, providing all kinds of produce, and may our sheep bring forth thousands of tens of thousands in our field. May our cattle be heavy with young, suffering no mishap or failings and bearing. May there be no cry of distress in our streets. And so I'd love for you to join with me as we sing and we pray through this and praying over the blessing of our families and our neighborhoods and our households. You may say, well, I don't have any sheep and I don't have any cattle. Well, you've got bank accounts and you've got jobs, and you've got things that you're putting your hands to today. And so we're going to pray those things today. So, Father, today, just as we've cultivated thanksgiving out of our hearts 
in praise and worship before you today. Lord, we lift up our families to you. We know, Lord, that there are some that are single and have no husband or no wife and no children, but today, Lord, we lift up those households. And Lord, there's single parent households. There's families with moms and dads and kids, and there's families that are empty nesters. And in every circumstance, Lord, we declare that our household is surrounded by you and that, Lord, our homes are your dwelling place that our living rooms are your sanctuaries. And Father, that you dwell in the midst of your people. And so we pray today, Lord, we're lifting up, as it says in verse 12, our sons in their youth, that they might grow up to be plants full grown. And Lord, we're praying over sons this morning, that Lord, sons, young and old, would be, Lord, young men that are full mature, that they are planted, that they are flourishing in the house of the Lord. Father, we pray over sons today, Lord, that their hearts would be hearts that are towards you, that there would be a desire and a trajectory saying that they want to know the Lord their God. So we're praying that over our sons, and I pray specifically over young children today, little boys today, that, Lord, in a world that wants to emasculate, wants to strip away their identity, wants to steal away their masculinity, even in youthfulness, God, we're praying, Lord, that you would make them to be young vines that are planted in the soil of your vineyard, in your house, that Psalm 92 reality, Lord, that they're planted in the soil of the house of God, in your presence, that they know you even from a young age and that they're strong and mighty, and that, Lord, that they're being developed to be warriors that know you, love you, and mature, fully mature in the gifts and the callings that you have upon their lives, God. Teenage boys, God. Teenage young men that are growing in fullness and wisdom and in stature and in confidence in who they are in you. And we pray your hand to be upon our sons today, that they would grow up into all that you've called them to be. In Jesus' name. of the enemy formed against them will prosper, that every voice of every lying spirit of this generation would be put on mute, and that the only voice they would hear, Lord, would be the voice of the Lord their God, just like Samuel, who had an ear to hear the voice of the Lord even in his youth, God, give our children a heart to know you as sons, to hear your voice, and to say, here am I, Lord, speak. I'm your servant, God. And we're praying even for those who are in their young adulthood. and Father, that maybe they've diverted off of the path, God. We're praying that you would have your hand upon our sons to 
turn them back towards you, Father, to protect them in every direction that they go, that no weapon of the enemy would be able to destroy the destiny in their hearts, but Lord, that they would be like plants that come to full maturity, to raise them up to be leaders of families, leaders in the community, leaders in the church, leaders in neighborhoods, leaders in the midst of their generation. God, raise them up, and we declare that they will serve the Lord their God. structure of a palace that Lord that our daughters would be nurturers mothers, wives women of God that are strong support systems that are creating and nurturing environments, strengthening families as only moms and women can to create environments where royalty, where the king comes in, that's what a palace is Lord, that it's their strength and it's their support that creates that environment for you to come in. So I'm praying, Father, that you would have your way in our daughters, that even from childhood, Lord, when 
They're dreaming about building their families, dreaming about being married, dreaming about having children, that, Lord, you would put strength on the inside of them, vision on the inside of them, Lord, that nurture on the inside of them, Father, that they would be strong and powerful in a world that's obsessed with how things look on the outside. Lord, that you would strengthen women of virtue on the inside of them. Lord, that they would be women of faith like Sarah, women of faith like Esther. Lord, that they would be supports, strong, prophetic. Lord, that they would have that nurture that is like the Holy Spirit that calls out the destiny in their children. Father, we're asking for your protective hand to be upon our daughters, a grace to be upon their life. In a generation that wants to attack femininity, wants to attack what it means to be a wife and a mother, wants to attack the voice of women, that, Lord, you would raise up strong daughters and that your Holy Spirit would be upon them and that, Lord, that they would be beautiful, in spirit and beautiful in your presence as well as beautiful in walking in their destiny that you have for them, Lord. Praying over our teenage daughters that they would be protected from a TikTok culture that wants to corrupt their destiny, corrupt their morals, corrupt their vision. Lord, that you would raise up in this generation our daughters to be moms and daughters and professionals and preachers and voices, nurturers and caretakers gifted in all that you've called them to be, God. Strengthen our daughters. may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near unto my dwelling place. Lord, we pray for a hedge of protection around our families, our households, and Lord, healing in our homes, upon our children, Lord, upon their mind, body, and spirit, that there is health and flourishing upon our children. And Lord, we're praying right now for the granaries, Father, for the financial and the economic blessing to be upon families and households. Lord, your economy, your supernatural way of providing for us is not limited to Dow Jones, to inflation, to the stock market, or what's going on in an election year. Jesus, you are Lord, and you are Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides for us. And so we pray, Father, for provision and supernatural increase and promotion and provision over our households, Lord. Your word says that when we tithe, when we honor you with the first fold, the first fruits of our increase, that, Lord, you rebuke the devourer for our sake. And you pour out such a blessing that we cannot contain it, Lord. We're praying for that blessing, the commanded blessing over our families and over our finances today. I'm praying that, Lord, in jobs, I'm praying for it, Lord, in supernatural increase. I'm praying, Father, for there to be prosperity and blessing over every aspect of our financial situations, God. Lord, I'm praying for tithing families to in this hour, Lord, you said, test me and see if I'm not able to rebuke the devourer for your sake and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Lord, I'm praying for you, Lord of Sabaoth. Lord, would you show yourself faithful? 
in this hour that you can provide even in the midst of a famine in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your provision. everything that we have need of. You said that your grace is able to make all things abound towards us, that at all times we would have everything that we need and an overflow to be a blessing to others. 2 Corinthians 9 is for us today. God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that in all things at all times you have more than enough than you need. You said, be not deceived whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Lord, I'm praying over the seeds that have been sown. Lord, I'm praying for the generosity that has been extended. Lord, your people who have freely given, Lord, that they would freely receive, that the seeds that have been planted would have a return. Lord, that they're, I'm praying for families that right now who are looking at the bills and saying, I don't know how we're going to pay for these. Looking at the needs that they have saying, Lord, I don't know how this is going to happen. Father, would you right now show up miraculously? Lord, we call you in the remembrance of the seeds that have been sown and we're praying for multiplication and for needs to be met supernaturally. Father, we're praying for increase in this hour. Thinking of Isaac, it says that he sowed in the time of famine and he reaped a hundredfold return. Supernatural increase, Lord. I'm praying for supernatural provision over those who right now have a need that seems insurmountable. That, Lord, you're going to allow their granaries to be filled to fullness. And, Lord, even their sheep are going to multiply. Lord, their jobs are going to multiply. Their fruitfulness is going to multiply. And, Father, there is going to be a blessing on their households today. Lord, I'm praying it today. Lord, tax returns. I'm praying for promotions and raises. For those who have put their hands and worked diligently as unto the Lord, that you're going to bless what they've put their hands to. New ideas that they've had that are going to produce side jobs. Lord, bless what they put their hands to. Those who have sown into missions, Lord, that you're going to bless them indeed. And we're praying, Father, that you are good. You are good even when we don't see in the natural how you're going to do it. We trust you. Let's just spend the next minute or so just singing about how we trust the Lord and that he is our provider. i 
sufficient for me. Yes, God, Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your grace is sufficient for me. Come on, sing that one more time. Declare that over your life. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your grace is sufficient for me. One more time. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your grace is sufficient for me. Lord, we believe that and we declare that over our lives, over our families households today. We are not moved by fear. We're moved by faith. And we put our faith and our trust in you because you are good. Thank you for meeting us today, filling our homes with your presence, and raising us up to be people that are salt and light in the midst of darkness. We give you thanks today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Those of you who are here in the prayer room, Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you today at noon. Tonight is 6.30 p.m. God bless you.